he wanted to get into it this time with the meat of it, is the world within. Is that fair, right, Brother Gee? That's right. All right. If you see that long sheet there, I think it's on the reverse side, sec page two, we have a whole list of things called the world within. We have them on tapes. You can buy the tapes, and it will tell you in detail each of those subjects. There's no way I can possibly cover all of that tonight. Each one of those is a two-hour lecture. But I can simply say we can overview it. I can begin to explain to my limited ability what I understand of the underworld and why it's so prominent now. It's not the only subject we cover. As you can see, we have close to 70, 80 subjects there. And I, each one has been at one time dear to my heart. But I'm now honoring what the people ask me for. Right on the tape is what we have. Each of those tapes is for sale. All you have to do is either get it from me tonight if I have it. I have a whole box of them, video and audio, or order it from the medicine. So again, you don't have to ask me about that. Each one is explained in detail under that list. In fact, I think it's the number. I'm doing this so that we can forge ahead and everybody will be satisfied and understand exactly what is being offered. So I can find out people to write with it. Let me borrow yours one second there, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. As you can see on the second page that she was looking at, the well within starts here, and goes all the way down to there. And for the beautiful young lady who asked me again, did I have anything new since? Then, yeah, that's this one subject new. These are those well within. I'm trying to still find one of my own. That way I can kind of skim through a little bit about all of them. The United States Park Program, High Auroral Area Research Program, some say it's a, a whole different acronym uh, for those who are in the know, is a project that they have in Alaska and that they have ready to supposedly deal with over the ground and over the horizon contact with the United States troops or anyone else who chooses to buy into the program. They're saying that this is to uh, help people to communicate in the armed forces or in the military or in government projects. The secondary thing is supposedly to find dormant mines, meaning in the ground, or dormant veins of precious metals by which they can mine it. The HARP program has found that on the continent of Africa, which of course, as we know, is Kemet, there are large veins of gold and diamond, not only in the areas that they previously thought, but that are going halfway around our planet. And wherever a continent has these kind of deposits, you have not only wealth, but you have, as they're finding now, higher vibrations. Keep that in mind. What people covet, kill, and fight for, gold, diamond, silver, copper, are actually supposed to be used to raise vibrations within every human body is gold, copper, iron, bauxite, and some 38 other metals. Minerals and metals all comprise our blood, and you cannot have good blood without minerals, and minerals are no good without vitamins. Everything leads together. When we see metals, and we begin to see these metals in an efficient form being utilized, we think of them as hardened things that can be worn. I have metals on here. Each of these metals you see is a magnet. I disguise my magnetic field by wearing them as jewelry. There are two magnets here. There are four magnets here. One, two, three, four and there are four magnets here. These 10,000 gongs, or gauss and ohms, as they call it, of magnetism, are presently running through my body. We lack magnetism. We can't think straight. We can't think long. We can't think in complicated form. Our glands are out of order. One way to align it is using a magnetic field, and you can use that by wearing it on your body. The blood is made up of the same thing. What does this have to do with the heart program? Everything. Wherever you have a continent or a landmass, or if you live on a mountain or you live in the water, and these things are prevalent, you live better, your organs work better, 
your hormones are secreted better, and better yet, your brain can adjust to different frequencies and begin to utilize what it's supposed to be. They say we use less than one-tenth of our brain. I think we use less than one-tenth of one percent of our brain. Now, I'm not trying to be egotistical because I am victim of that. I'm trying to do something about that when I found out how dumb I was. Not because I'm a dumb person, I think I'm an intelligent person, but the brain doesn't have the power to do half the things it's supposed to do. That's one of the reasons why earlier you heard me say we have an electromagnetic field and the power to start to really use our deeper side, our hind brain, if you want to call it that, is just coming back to the planet. It was taken away and adjusted so that anybody on this planet could only reach a certain amount of intelligence. I don't even call it intelligence, I call it spirituality. Deeper thinking. The world within is the hidden key for everything on this planet and the reason why we're going through all the changes that we are going through. If you don't feel we're going through changes, you're not listening to the news or I don't know where you've been keeping yourself. Everything you can imagine, every phylum, every mineral, every insect, every is coming into juxtaposition and fighting each other. Everything is trying to change frequency. I go back by saying, and this could really, if I take you back to ground zero, a man by the name of Nikolai Tesla, a Hungarian Austrian, at the turn of the century, came up with a new principle. It really wasn't new, but he called it a new principle. And by the way, he said it was given to him by people from Venus. This is what they never tell you. And this new principle involved a coil that he created called a Tesla coil, named after him. He stated, he did not originate this. This was given to him by extraterrestrials. And in deep metaphysics, you must separate extraterrestrials from aliens. An alien is anything that is intelligent, that exists in the cosmos. I didn't say solar system. I didn't say universe. I didn't say constellation. I said what? Cosmos. Anything that is intelligent. And there are things supposedly intelligent in this cosmos that you wouldn't dream of, or maybe you would because the movies are bringing it up. It didn't say it had to be humanoid, have a head and two arms, two legs, and a trunk. It said intelligence. Now, anything that is humanoid, has a head, two hands, trunk, feet, is extraterrestrial, meaning it has an intelligence that has either been on a planet like this, exists somewhere on this planet, or one like that. Therefore, they're usually more empathetic or sympathetic if they exist. The heart program is said to be able to upgrade communication. The secondary thing Hart said was that it could now dig deep into the ground with these energy rays and find out where caverns are, where anything in the earth going all the way down to 600 miles could be. And there's a deeper reason for that, not only to find out where all the gold and silver so-called precious metals and minerals are, but to also find out where underground <coughs> caverns are and underground tunnels. Based on that is where one of the big hidden mysteries of Earth is. I always say, and I have, with that, let me say something else too. Um, I admit to being a little neurotic, right? I admit that my neurosis grows daily but I say I am not psychotic. And if you understand the psychotic individuals that are running us and what they're doing to us, you also would have a little bit of neurosis and it would go daily. <laughs> you look out here and see these public storage buildings that they're building and understand the federalized prison organization is building it and they're in every city and every county and people aren't <coughs> storing things in it. But they say, what, public storage? They told you the truth. You get a little bit neurotic. If you are an ad, and there's a gossamer or something underneath you and it begins to shake and you hear a lot of paws coming you think it might be a spider you get a little neurotic some people might even say you become psychotic but I think we're already under the rule of psychotic individuals <coughs> power mad egomaniacs that are reached the point where they're psychotic with the endeavor for one thing power they have all the money because they print the money they have control but they want more power the power now that they can get will be when they can utilize or conquer what they call the underworld. 
the hidden area underneath our planet, which nobody seems to know much about. You've heard nothing about Orcus in the underworld. The Egyptians and Nubians talked about Amentas, the land of sticks and so on like this. In the Bible, there's reference to hell. Hell means hell and is to cover. Come from the word hell. And hell is the derivative of that. By the way, too, to settle another argument very quickly, or to start you to thinking and maybe hopefully that argument way. The word hell got into the Bible from the abbot Odilio. The abbot was a, a holy man at the time. He came from Cluny, Ireland. And while he was writing his portion in the 18, about 780 AD, he saw some of the crusaders who came to the hell's port, which was called the gateway to the Mediterranean, okay, from the rocks of Gibraltar. And it was stated that while in the land through the hell's port, he heard moans and groans and cries of the tormented in Amenta. Now, this simply meant that there were lands inside near the Aegean Sea in the Mediterranean, North Africa, and so on like that, that had deep tunnels and caves. And people from time to time had heard moans and groans and cries and shrieks by people in torment deep beneath the earth. And it was known that this area was lined with many caves and many tunnels. Most people didn't know how deep these caves and tunnels went. Because of this, and because of his uh, dedication to the secular world, if you would, this abbot then wrote in that uh, through the hell's court, in the areas referred to as Amenta, were the people who were being uh, tortured and all for their sins that were committed on earth. And this became part, of course, of holy text in the Old Testament. The Hell's Court exists in many places. There's a place uh, near Brittany called Malta. And Malta uh, used to be visited by tourists all times of years. If you know, Malta has been closed, certain islands are within the Malta Straits, to the public. Because of something that happened in 1942 there. There was a group of school children from, from England, I think it was about 30 of them, with a school arm and a guy, who went down on one of these tourist streets and Two of the kids strayed off from the actual lineage of people that were going to visit that the speedographer would do these tunnels and these caves. Long story short, two of the kids came uh, back, but four kids went after them, and they were crying and shrieking and said that they saw some big people with big heads down there, and that they had grabbed the school mark. Well, they sent people down, they were never found. They saw a huge, gigantic uh, prince near a mud area there. They found an underground river that they didn't know was there, and nothing was ever seen of them since. This went back to legends that existed about Malta as being one of the areas that the people from the underworld would sometimes surface. With that, they closed Malta. You'll find that there are at least 305 different open locations on the surface of the planet that is known about that lead to deep down tunnels. Some of the tunnels, if you go to many of the museums, in Chicago, I know the Museum of Science and Industry, the Field Museum, I'm sure the Smithsonian Institute, many places, and you start requesting speedographers or speedologists type of uh, things about caverns and things like this, you'll find there's a whole world right underneath your feet. Caves as big as cities that you could put Detroit into four times. Tunnels, that they call tunnels, that may be four miles long and two miles wide. Those are called tunnels. And they seem to be in sections, getting down deeper and deeper into our earth. Now, what has confused people is that the um, geologists, and many even of the astrophysicists have given a false impression that at the core of Earth is the molten lava area there. And that degrees of this lava spews out, going in circular beds around the planet, and then finally some of them may even get to the top where they now have dormant mountains, and all mountain ranges were formed by a volcanic action. Let me go back over that again. Anytime you see a mountain, the Allegheny, the Sierra, whatever you want to say, Anytime you see a mountain range, understand that came from eruptions. Gas or something was so powerful and needed venting somewhere that it formed these mountain ranges. Acts of nature, sea quakes, earthquakes have slammed continents, which they call tectite plates together, and formed others. But these were formed by pressure. Any mountain range can become active. I repeat, any mountain range can become active. Why? because the very tunnels that form them are now encrusted, they're still there. 
and if gas, lava, anything that can form pressure is ever vented through these tunnels, it will seek again the path of least resistance, which means pre-existing openings. And underneath all mountain range in the core, there's going to be a hollow tunnel area leading down the cellar. So keep that in mind. Any mountain range can become volcanic. And if you're keeping up with the latest news, many of them are as we speak. So as you listen, and I'm talking right now. It's something that they don't want to talk about. And so they're diverting you with all kind of political ploys and everything else, and sports and everything else. The point is, these tunnels are becoming active. Volcanoes are again beginning to become active around our Earth. I have some things uh, I didn't, I wasn't thinking in terms of going to get this deeply into it tonight, but I do have some uh, internet drawings from NOAA, which is uh, oceanic and, and, and something else, uh, part of the government that does these things from satellites. I can show you fires breaking out all around our planet as we speak, and fires that are going on too numerous to mention. You know, we're talking about thousands of fires, not just down in South America where they're lying to you and telling you that it's because farmers are burning their crop. The whole state of Florida, every county in there, I think it was three counties that were not untouched. It has nothing to do with farmers burning crops. It has to do with the heat, but it also has to do with volcanic action beginning to take place under our feet. They're lying to you about it because they don't want to scare you, and they do want to control you. And when people panic, they're beyond control. You either kill them and prison them, or you have what is called a revolt. So they're keeping all of this quiet. Our planet is becoming possibly volcanic or so. But understand something else. It's my understanding that what they told you about the structure of our Earth is not correct. And what they told you about a molten lava center, and then everything just coming up with like a little onion skin to little areas, and then you went up a big mountain and it back is not true. But our Earth has seven layers. And each layer, if you say it was inhabitable, which of course we know we can't live inside the Earth, right? If it was inhabitable, you'd have more space inside and outside because you have this one you have a blackboard here, but you can use your own consciousness. You have one space to live on the surface. But if you've got seven, each one getting smaller inside, you have more livable area inside than out. And the mean temperature of most tunnels is 60 degrees, 62.7 or something like that. There's one variance when volcanic activity happens and those tunnels heat up. Other than that, anybody can live inside, and there's plenty of air down there simply because just in the huge tunnel itself, if air ever was there before, and it had to be to form stagmites and stagmites, stagmites, then you have to have air down there. There is water down there, whole rivers that flow. Right here in the United States from, this is what Grant was, when Grant was trying to, uh, what's this other guy who fought the, the, the Civil War, Southern uh, General uh, Lee, yeah. Lee had planned to attack the Northern Army by going through tunnels that Jesse James had used and that the right, uh, the right brothers, the Dalton's and stuff had used that exist actually from Lookout Mountain, you can walk underneath Tennessee, you can go through Missouri, you can go through Kentucky, you can go through Indiana and never touch the surface. Yes. And they know this. And there are whole rivers that flow down there. There are different kind of creatures down there. Most of them are very pale and big eyes because there's very little light. Then you have whole areas as big as Detroit, as big as Chicago, that are well lit and they don't know how they're lit. They just know that they are lit. The rocks seem to give off a glow. There's atmosphere down there that is more breathable oxygen because it's not full of methane and hydrocarbons that we have here than here. And some of the waters that flow to these underground, especially landlocked lakes, come from underground. In Hawaii, in Maui, in the out islands and so, they have islands that go down deeply in those craters that seem to be smoke, uh, smoking fumes and so, but you walk on a side path and you come in from a different area, you find yourself in a whole different kind of world. Whereas Hawaii is limited and the outline is of it, you could almost walk to the United States from the Hawaiian chain. Now, all of this I could prove to you if we had time. I'm giving you a big, deep overview of the whole thing. The world within is said to be an area of Earth that they don't talk about and that there is more livable space inside our planet than on its surface. The problem comes about is that supposedly there are creatures or things living down there already and have been for centuries. They say that there are cities down there. Some of the cities are no longer habitable, others are actually inhabited. Getting into who lives there and why and all this takes again a whole lesson that you can see by this sheet. Down there also are very advanced machinery. 
And it's been said from time to time, advanced scientists there have set on the surface people and things to see how they make out from time to time. Now, all of that is talking about the world within. What I tried to do before we jump to that big jump that we just did was to show you how it could be formed, how long it might be there, and that it is very extensive and very expansive. And you can go to any continent on our Earth, and down somewhere you start running to one of these tunnels, one of these cities, one of these caves. The cave world depletes or makes small the world here. The Egyptians tried to show that. The Nubians tried to show that. All ancient people, which they now refer to as Sumerians, if you understand Sumer, would be had to be part of Mesopotamia one. And if you go back there, you see that the people who had to be living there had to be dark skinned people. And these were people who knew these things. This is why when you begin to do research on the Negrito, you will find he is the most ancient person found on earth. I didn't say anything about Negro or any or African. I said Negrito. <coughs> it's a little black dwarf. And this little black dwarf seemingly has been set or made to inhabit. It was the best prototype that could be made at the time. Any part on earth that you go to, no matter what the continent, no matter what the culture, no matter what the religion, no matter what the site, no matter what the people look like now, anywhere you go on earth and you start to do digs, and you go down archaeologically to the petrol and so on, you will find the little black dwarf or people living there, the ancestors of the people that are now inhabiting it, that look like Negritos. What does a Negrito look like? Three to four foot tall, small person, very slender, a simple little old, long head, peppercorn or nappy meaty hair, and broad Negroid face, uh, features. This is your most ancient man, no matter what continent. You don't have to go to Africa. You go to Europe, which isn't even a continent. You can go to Asia. You can go to Antarctica, Antarctica, wherever you want to go. And you will find the remnants of the Negrito. Which means that if this person was everywhere on the surface, how did he get? How did she get everywhere on the surface? They were intelligent, but obviously not intelligent enough to do with the things that have been found alongside them. I say they were a prototype placed here from people living in the underworld and extraterrestrials. Keep in mind again how I started this. An extraterrestrial is one who looks somewhat like you, meaning has a head, arms, legs, and a trunk, and usually stands erect. An alien is what? Anything that is intelligent. If it's a bug, like we just saw in what is this movie they had out there, um, Men in Black, okay? If it's uh, any kind of thing, as long as it's intelligent, it's an alien. I state that through the many literatures, the holy books around our planet, way out metaphysical books, and the not so way out historical books, when they get time to talking about the underworld, they usually begin to give you images and footnotes and references to other things. It is a natural ploy and a fact that they don't want you to understand the truth or the falseness, the story of the underworld. As you can see, I've gotten pretty extensively into it, and I have all the way down to seven parts. Some of these are not even for sale because they're listed here again. And it pretty much answers the questions that you would have about our Earth, about the origin of races on our Earth, about the war that is going on about our Earth, what our Earth actually is, why the intelligent people of Earth do not live on the surface, and why the people that are on the surface are adaptogens. And to be an adaptogen, you must have melanin. Cups getting through a lot of things and getting to the core. It's a lot for you, that's okay. I'm not running away, I'll stay here and answer questions on this. Melanin is something that none of the physical chemists, none of the biologists, none of the geneticists can break down. The best they can do is to quantumly delineate melanin at its sites and how it acts under certain chemical conditions. It can't be broken down chemically by the science that we have here now. And anywhere it is, it dominates. It dominates any gene. It dominates any cell, any cell governor, any protoplasm. It articulates what can be taken in and changes frequencies within. It makes you be able to see with your hands or react without going through the brain. One of the things that they told me in school I spent a lot of time in there, that big training program that they gave me. I got educated after I left because they gave me enough training to find out that they lied. They told me another lie. They told me this. 
I put about the no two things occupying the space now. They say there is no action within the body that cannot be governed, controlled, or accentuated by the brain. It's laboratory. Wherever you have strong melanin at a melanin site, that cell has potential to think for itself and operate. Now, I know that sounds like mad. I told you I was neurotic. I had never admitted to being psychotic. I am not crazy. But I am very upset and nervous about the lies that are being told, and especially to people who need it the most, who therefore don't understand their gift and don't understand the time that is now with us. Hold the question. I know you have comments and questions all over the place. I'm sure you have more by the time I... Oh, I'm sorry. I have finished. Melanin is the key to the underworld and the exterior world. Why do I say that? Melanin is an adaptogen. Let me go a little bit. You know we're talking about the world within. We have to talk about the world within you first because you are the same thing as this planet. You have everything this planet has in you, but we just don't know how to use it and how to get to it. Melanin, when it is present in a cell, that's an adaptive frequencies, infrared and ultraviolet, full spectrum light, darkness, and it is an adaptogen. When left alone, and when augmented by making the pineal gland, which secretes melanin, active, and the pineal gland is just like a big crystal. It is your biggest crystal. It represents, again, in fact, to give you another little secret out, the pyramid that they saw at Giza, because they have 350 other pyramids on the surface. I don't know how many thousand in that. Okay? It represents the ability to crystallize thought, to send in higher infrared and full spectrum light throughout every gland in the body, to attenuate the, bo the body's blood, because the blood is nothing but a river of moving crystals. Urine is nothing but a river of moving crystals. Your body is nothing but a big crystal. And the big crystal that organizes all of it is the pineal gland. They even told you in med school and pre-med and everything else that the pineal gland was an atrophied, dormant organ, no longer necessary in human species. Well, in human species it's not, but in mankind and man it had to be. Human is a whole different derivative anyway. That's where we made a mistake. We think human is man. We don't understand that mankind, man, and human, womb man, and non man, and nomos are a whole different species. They have collectively mistreated you and misguided you. I state this having gone through their training program, and now I'm giving you truth. You may not accept this truth, but at least you'll hear something that stimulates your thinking. You may already have reached this conclusion. You may never have before, and you may think I am psychotic. I already told you, I'm not psychotic. I'm new right. Yeah. Now, the story is that the creation of this planet, as it started in a cooling down process, it was not only just a planet that cooled down, but a special adaption was given to this cooling down area to make this a very unique, almost super-made habitat. Most planets don't have what this planet has. There's supposed to be 22 others in this whole universe like this one, because here, Anything that could live and breathe could be accommodated. This is a beautiful planet. If you've traveled about it, you've seen it. The only thing not beautiful on this planet are the minds of individuals. There are beautiful people here of all colors and all shapes. But the thing that makes us different is the brain and the mind that functions through that brain. And because of that, they have messed up a beautiful, perfect planet. But they haven't done much to it in the underworld because most of the people don't know how to get down there don't know what to do down there once they're there. Every island and every people has legends about creatures or people, some looking different ways, that have come from out of the earth, outside of mountains, have come down the side of mountains. You hear UFOs, Vintlas and Vermonts, that's another term that should be used instead of UFOs, that have come out of mountaintops. From time to time, people have prayed for rain and done rain dances, and they got rain because they appeased the gods or they got the attention of the gods. We laugh because we don't understand. There's very little laughable about this planet. Really, this planet is a planet of tears, they call Cerros. Because what has happened here is diabolically terrible to a people and to a most beautiful organism which is called now the planet Earth. As this planet cooled down, it supposedly was visited by the elves. Now we have the word elders and all its derivatives. If you will look up in the Funkin Wagnos or again the Masonic book uh, of the dictionary, again, now the Masonic dictionary, it will teach you again that the L's are usually made because they use the L shape, which is in, of course, the English and American language. But that shape crosses language. 
that shape is found in all. You'll see if I had a blackboard, I could show you. But even the cross shows you four L's, but from different parts. If you take 360 degrees, each 90 degree division mm -hmm. is an L. And if you say that this 90 and this 90 and this 90, you would form a cross. But that is really four L's. The four L's supposedly were like archangels or very advanced people who came for the four corners to finish off the project that was called the Pantheral Sir. Well, the other names for it, which we now call Earth. That symbol has been universal. It's been found in petroglyphs and hieroglyphs. Petroglyphs means rock writing. Hieroglyphs is sacred writings. All sacred writings will show you the cross. And they tell you, of course, it's a Christian thing. It's not a Christian thing. Long before Christianity was ever thought of, they have found these things. They have found them in petroglyphs, which means in rock writings, beneath the ocean lines, in caves deep beneath the waters, you still see that symbol. In King Tutankhamun's tomb, you found that symbol. Akhenaten's area, Ramesses area, you will see this symbol. In Miro, Tiwananta, Uxmal, down in South America, you will find the same symbol. Amongst the Native Americans, you will see the same symbol. And you will also see what is called the Thunderbird. That, what is called the Caduceus, that round circle with wings. Everybody has it, and just call it different names. You will also find the swastika, which Adolf Hitler, of course, used. He did not invent that. He embellished on the original cross by giving it directions. The story is that these people that were here, who came here to perfect the planet to bring in a special scientific project, were still not able to understand that they were not gods or they were not the creator. Because while they were here in mass, our sun reversed polarity. And the sun behind the sun reversed polarity, and 12 other suns reversed polarity. Now, wait, what time are we talking about? Wouldn't even do to even use time, millions. We're talking about millions, if not billions of years. The story varies with cultures. But they were here, and they got caught up in a magnetic sun anomaly. The sun reversed polarity, and they got entrapped because they were not creatures with bodies. They were mental creatures. But once a sun reverses polarity, then you're captured in what is called time. And that simply means that now you get frozen and you have to take on physical structure rather than just being poor mind, pure mind, manipulating structure. That's why the phrase, there's nothing new under a sun, comes about. A sun means already that it's a controlled environment. These people, supposedly then, uh, were abandoned. They called themselves the abandoned ones, or the abandandero. Later on, they became simply known as heroes, heroes, the inhabitants, derogatory, genetized, robotized organisms living deep within the planet Earth. They couldn't get back to their own culture, their own time, or anything else. They became locked on a planet that they had only came to act as planet preparers for. Because of this, and then as the planet proceeded on what was supposed to be done, locked deep inside the Earth was a very advanced being, very angry by now, and becoming degenerate because they were going backwards, where the people that they were here to create and the life forms that they were here to use were going forward. Based on that, you understand